So with um, this session, the main goals are to introduce social engineering. Um, so whether you are already familiar with it, or you are a student and you're doing a security degree, or you just want to know what companies, employees, or individuals are doing nowadays in terms of social engineering, why and how it happens, uh, to also identify, avoid, and even report social engineering, and some examples and activities uh, hopefully will be quite fun. So the official term about social engineering is the use of deception to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential or personal information that may be used for fraudulent purposes. And social engineers at the moment is one of the biggest threats in our society, whether that's down to individuals, home users, or at our organizations, universities, schools, social engineering is everywhere nowadays. So why is it happening? Why people are trying to target individuals at different levels and different environments? First of all, to obtain personal information, so that could be something like bank accounts, um, your email addressing, sensitive data, anything that they think they can get out from you. Uh, to gain unauthorized access to certain devices, certain uh, warehouses where you hold big data, uh, sidestepping established procedures, and just because they can nowadays to access all that data. Uh, some examples of social engineering include pretexting, where uh, they're trying to give you a scripted scenario and you either to pretend, they are to pretend there's someone else and try to get information from you. Phishing, where they send links via emails or on social media platforms and they claim to be from a valid company and again, they're trying to convince you they are accurate and you should click certain links, you should share certain information. Uh, spare phishing, where basically there's an extra effort is required because you want to attack a specific individual. Uh, baiting, uh, where it is happening through infected USBs, and tailgating, where you're trying to um, attack and get help by an authorized person so you can get access to restricted areas or devices. Um, it's a bit blurry, I'm afraid. The screen seems a bit better. So I do have some graphs there, some statistics, um, and you can see that social engineering is happening more and more nowadays. It is becoming an issue um, for home users, for teenagers, which is becoming a quite important aspect, uh, even for government regulations and the curriculum that they're trying to implement, uh, but also organization levels and how it's affecting your employees. Uh, the phishing emails especially, which is one of the most common way uh, people are trying to target individuals. Um, as you can see, there is an average success rate of 13.7. And you can go on this website as well, on that source, and you can find their report. Where they've written about how phishing emails are changing, um, and they are trying to target individuals nowadays. So, most of us, I assume, we are a bit aware of what social engineering is nowadays. But how confident do you feel you can identify phishing emails? So I've given you those little calculators, um, and I've uh, turned the polling on at the moment. So um, A, if you feel confident, you can identify phishing emails, and B, that you don't feel very confident. So everybody feels very, very confident in identifying um, phishing emails. Excellent. So I've got some examples here. Um, don't know if you can read very well from the screens or the sides. Um, if you want to come closer, I don't mind. Um, so do you think this is a legitimate email? So we've got 14% who think that it, this is a real email, and some of you, that th well, most of you, 86%, and it's correct, this is not a real email, it's not a legitimate email. How about this one? Do you think it's a legitimate email or not? <coughs> Good, more people are getting up, we've had enough now. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> that's good practice for the dancing that's coming up later. What does the URL? 
Good. So yes, it is a real email that I received personally. It is from PayPal for sixty-two percent. But it was a bit tricky, wasn't it? So you know, but just looking at an email, sometimes we're not very sure if it's real one or not. So how about this one again from PayPal? Let's open the poll thing. Kids. So yes, only five percent think that this is um, a real email. So very well done. And a last one. <laughs> so yeah, that's not a legitimate email either. So 84% of you. So very well done. You've done really well. Um, so now it's activity time. Now you will do it. So on your tables, I've put upside down a set of phishing emails. Okay, um, and a couple of you might recognize the examples that I'm using, so thank you for providing those examples on the university's website. So, I've also given you some flip charts, some board markers, and highlighters. So, I will break you down into groups of tables, and you'll be given a different activity. So, if I have the four tables over there to answer the first question, from, you know, if you highlight on those emails, what would you look for when you open your email and say, well, is this a real email or not? Okay, so try to highlight keywords and then on your flip chart, make a list of suggestions that you could give an individual user or an employee how to spot. Um, uh, so, yeah, just make a, a list of keywords that you need to look for um, for phishing emails. Um, those four tables there, you need to answer the second question. Provide the list you could give to your employees. So again, you need to look for those, um, you know, how to spot that this is um, a phishing email. And these tables over here, you need to provide uh, advice and or measures for the employer so they can help out the employees in identifying um, emails that are phishing emails and not legitimate ones. Okay? So there's three different questions, four tables over there. Then these four tables, and then that group over there. A person from the, from the table over there is going to tell us quickly. So they're answering the last question. That's out of the room. They're answering the very last question. Advice and measures uh, you could ask your, the, the employees to have. Uh, yeah, apologies. We've not used the flip. Chart and we've sort of scribbled on the it's masking, fine. but <coughs> I think you get the idea. So we were advising, yeah, what the sort of things to look out for. We've gone for a recipient check first of all, checking the email address it's come from, especially the domain because that's a lot of the obvious things. You know, you don't expect PayPal to be sending from Outlook.com, etc. One of the other things was, is the email expected? Were you waiting for that? DVLA tax refund or not. <laughs> Spelling and grammar, well, that's quite an obvious one. If you reread it, you know, the, the poorly written ones are fairly easy to pick out. On that same sort of line, quality resolutions of the logos, that sort of thing. Um, and then, other than hovering over the links to check and make sure that they're in line with what you've received, have you received a an email of the kind of contrary from HSBC saying they'd never ask for your password and that sort of thing. And that was them. That was it, really. Thank you. Okay. Shannon, pick another table. <laughs> For the same question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we had pretty much the same as what these guys said, I suspect the only thing I would add is um, to have things like monitoring and like honeypot mailboxes which you can um, look for any sort of active phishing campaigns and stuff that might be coming in. 
Um, we talked about the importance of anti-malware, um, looking at the headers in the email as well, as well as what's just been displayed by the client. Look at the actual mail headers to see, again, where the source and um, from the emails come from. Um, spam filtering. Oh yeah, never follow the links and go go out of go out of bands. So if you see an email from PayPal, navigate to the website in the browser rather than following any links in the Good. in the email. I think that's it. Excellent. Anything else from the empl for the employers? Something they haven't mentioned so far? Bob has something and Nathan has something. The tables at the back. Anything? Who can save a bit of time for Steve's talk? <laughs> Yes, Nate. Apologies if I've missed this. Um, we had about deactivating links from external email sources okay. automatically. Right. Bob, would you like to? Yes, right yeah, yeah. If we, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just behind you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, the first thing is if I was a business and I received spurious emails, as an executive director, I'd go to see my COIO colleague and tell him his junk filtering is useless. <laughs> he needs to improve it because I would tell my staff, don't waste time by reading any unsolicited emails. Delete. Okay. And empty the delete folder. If I was an individual, I also don't open unsolicited emails. I don't read them. Any bank, financial institution or government body does not communicate you, with you by email or phone calls. Okay. So unsolicited mail, unsolicited calls are totally stopped. Okay. That's the advice I would give. Thank you. Don't waste time on it. Okay. How about the middle side of the room? You're answering the second question. We're going backwards this time. So advice you could give to your employees. So when you're running, let's say, you know, a training session uh, for security. So. Um, so yeah, it's pretty pretty similar to um, what we've had, but um, check the sender's email, sort of the. Um, uh, so whether it's at so if it was from Lloyd's and it was from uh, Outlook or something like that, um, obviously that would be a big warning sign. Um, you can look at the hyperlinks and check what the URL is before you click on them. Um, uh, and obviously, as we've already said about spelling and grammar, so I think that's about it. Okay. Any other Pardon? table? Sorry. Oh, and also if there's any contradictions in the email. Okay. Good. Any other table? Yeah. Similar in some respects, um, but added to that is unexpected messages. For example, UPS, TNT deliveries. Are you actually expecting anything from that? Because people still click on them. Um, looking at the formatting and grammar, nothing is urgent because they always play on your emotional responses. Expect you to respond within four hours, 24 hours, or so on and so forth. Again, Verify if it looks suspicious in person. So if it's from an internal account because the address could be spoofed, um, just contact the individual by phone. Uh, do your training, internal security training and advice. Hopefully your internal um, intranet will have sort of the right sort of advice on that. And similar to what we're saying on there, if you haven't got sort of external links blocked, um, don't download, don't click on any of the links. Good. Anything else for question two? Okay, what about the first question? Things you could take out from those examples that I gave you, um, and what you need to look for. Um, so, uh, essentially what um, you can uh, sort of profile from a, a suspected phishing email. Um, a lot of the times they'll have a lot of grammar convention mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, they won't really sound very natural and they don't sound professional at all. Um, you can usually sometimes write those off um, at the beginning, but usually they'll uh, try to solicit personal information or um, uh, money out of you. They'll also um, try to uh, get information and um, sort of uh, modify it in a way so that it makes it seem urgent or um, otherwise um, nonsensical. Um, so for example, um, it says that a tax rebate will expire on the um, 6th of March of 2017, which is it's nonsense. Um, uh, they'll also try to mask uh, links within just regular text so that you don't um, actually know where the link is going. You just click. Uh, button that says this link um, 
and it'll just bring you to a bogus website. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? I would like to volunteer. Otherwise, Shannon will volunteer you. <laughs> How about the table at the back? Um, I think um, one of the one of the key aspects that quite a lot of people tend to misuse is um, in the domain name of the sender of the email. Mm. I'm not sure if this was mentioned, but there's sometimes like one letter that is out of place that is similar. So, for instance, one of the examples shown had um, like I PayPal or something like that or something similar, and that can if you overlook that specific letter, you can be none the wiser that it's a that it's illegitimate. That so I think that's that's one of the bigger factors. Yep. Anything else? Anybody else would like to add? No. Okay. Thank you. Very well done, everyone. <laughs> so, um, to summarise a bit, um, I have a list, and I forgot to add the reference on it. Um, it's um, from a paper that Steve wrote um, a few years ago. Um, a list to remember, basically. Uh, so, things you can start asking and questioning uh, when you look at an email. So does a request seem legitimate and usual? Should you be asked for this information? And you sh should you um, basically provide it? What is the value of the information you're being asked to provide? Are you confident that the source of the request is genuine? And do you have to respond now, as you very correctly said? Um, or if you're not sure, you can give them a call and make sure um, that the email is legitimate. And, and then the five steps to defeat social engineering is to educate, educate individuals, educate your employees, but you also need to educate the employees themselves, the people who are running the organization, how to make their training on security awareness, to apply to every individual on their organization, and they, those individuals can comply while they're, being, they're seeing at the training session. Introduce user policies, regular updates to your systems and the software, and verify the identities. And finally, from the National Cyber Security Center, and I do have copies for almost everyone in this room, if you would like to take it away. This is a list with four layers, what they're suggesting on how to deal with phishing attacks from individual level all the way up to the organization level. So I do have copies if you would like to take something away, uh, but you can also find it online as well.